this webcast for the History and Context of Journalism. The topic for today is existentialism. My name is Catherine Hayes and I'm here with Chris Horry who's just given a talk on the subject and some second year journalism students. It seemed like a, a massive topic, so if you were to sum it up, what would you say, Chris? It's a, it's a, it is a massive topic and therefore very difficult to sum up, but in practical terms it's a renewed interest in the dilemmas of personal choice, of the moral consequences of the deci of decisions that we make in life, um, both for our own moral good, if you like, for our own moral well-being, our own sense of ourselves, and for its implications on society. It's a doctrine essentially of very extreme personal uh, responsibility and that comes I think from its intrinsic atheism. We've previously been discussing Nietzsche and his atheism but in a world where there is no God, where there is no uh, pre-existing moral system, um, a world that's eff effectively pointless we're left with this dilemma of what to make of that uh, and how to construct a morality really for ourselves with, with very few pointers. So it, it's rather a, a troubling way of looking at the world, but I always think there's two sides to it. It's, it's, it's a frightening doctrine in many ways, the, the idea of existential angst, of constant worry about uh, of what we should be doing with this brief span of life as they see it that we have how not to waste it, how not to uh, cause uh, lots of problems for other people, but it's also a great liberation at the same time because there are no pre-existing moral standard. That's a proposition. There's no, there's no particular thing you should be doing with your life, really. Um, you, it's a liberation uh, to, to make your own life, to create rules for yourself and, and to try and live by the, those rules. Very liberating, I think to groups that we thought uh, traditionally were oppressed in society, particularly in the very stuffy world of 19th century you know, Victorian imperialist uh, European society. So for black people, for women, for gay people, for people who uh, experience uh, constant sort of really prejudice, it, it, it can be a liberation because at the core of it is the idea of existence is everything that people do not have essences. As you don't have to behave in this particular way or that particular way because you're a student or because you're a, a gypsy or because you're a man or you're a woman. That it's frightening on, on one level, but life is there to be made and it will be made for you if you don't make it yourself. OK, so how, how can we relate all this to journalism, Chris? I think in terms of journalism, you've got to look at two things. One is the way in which I think existentialism has invaded popular culture. It's absolutely everywhere. In advertising, for example, there's this constant thing that's coming from billboards and advertising of just do it, be yourself, consume this product and change your life. You can change your life. It's a kind of commercialized, institutionalized existentialism all the time. It's there constantly. So it's there in the popular culture all the time. So if you look at the Brit Awards and you see Lady Gaga, there she is, she's determining herself. If she wants to look like that in that extraordinary way, then, then she can and she can't really be criticised. In fact, she's lionised for being a complete individual, a one-off, somebody who lives her life uh, by her own lights in the spirit of complete freedom. That's the commercial pitch of that, whether that's sincere or not is another matter. So constantly in the culture, existentialism is there, the ethic of existentialism. Secondly, more directly, some of the greatest journalists of the, of the 20th century, the 21st century is really too young yet to look back on the canon of journalists, were explicitly existentialist in their approach. Albert Camus himself, who we looked at, was a journalist. And the whole trend that we saw in a movement in the 1960s called the New Journalism, associated with people like Joan Didion, um, Hunter S. Thompson, Tom Wolfe, was to try and see people as completely uh, undetermined bundles of possibility, to see them constantly with fresh eyes. Um, 
to to try and report on situations with no preconditions with no preconceptions so to immerse ourselves as journalists it's called gonzo journalism to immerse ourselves in situations and write about the actual reality of how people are behaving without these preconceptions another great uh master of this i think he was the greatest journalist of the 20th century he often appears in such lists was the polish journalist ryzard kapuczynski who we'll look at in some more detail and he's very interested he goes in, he was a foreign reporter for the polish uh, press service and he writes about the third world and he's interested in ritual and ritual behavior and just minutely detailing what some people think is the right thing to do and the wrong thing to do. So there's a direct intellectual input, particularly into feature writing, uh, this whole observational, we've discussed that, the observational form of journalism. Very cool, very just saying, well, this is what people do, and just presenting it to people, that, that, that's that been massive. And secondly, it's everywhere in pop culture. Everywhere. Everyone's an existentialist these days. So um, to be an existentialist, uh, if you want to free yourself, you need to have a passionate commitment to something, and that can be anything. That's right. The kind of existential heroes, existential saints, are people who are completely, unreasonably, passionately, madly committed to something. They know it's a sort of self-conscious act of being committed to something, um, but to do something in a moderate way, particularly just to please others or to fit in, is a kind of existential sin. The only way to free yourself from all this angst is to have this compulsion, this overriding desire to do something. So existential love affair has to be unbelievably romantic. So when that comes up in the drama and the movies, people are you know like uh, Vincent van Gogh that they'll cut their ears off and everything like that they're so passionate to, to make this a fair work it's all-consuming or in music a, a character like John Coltrane for example who taught himself by circular breathing to be able to play saxophone solos four hours long exploring every single possible note uh, and total abandonment when when uh, I've seen film of Coltrane playing total passionate abandonment to the moment now, spontaneity, uh, uh, that kind of free jazz, not interested in the least bit about the audience, just there in the moment performing with absolute rhapsodic passion. That is existentialist heaven. Existentialist hell is doing anything just because you have to. I mean, we, I mean, an existentialist has to compromise with the world and earn a living, but somebody who just went and worked in a shop or something forever uh, and just thought oh I, I'm just going to have this modest life and get through life and die and not do anything Th those kind of people are the people that the existentialists don't like and they worry about them and they think that there are bad implications about that which I, I think Veronica has a question wh which will which will segue with that yes I was wondering um, how about Nazis they were passionate about what they were doing what is um, what is the existentialist take on that? Well, there there were two great totalitarian horrors of the of the twentieth century: Stalinist communism and uh, Nazism. And the existentialists are very well, centrally concerned with both of those. Partly because of the times, Jean Paul Sartre himself lived through the war. Um, I think he was an, he was a prisoner. He was a German prisoner of war for a while, and he wrote while he was a a prisoner and it was the experience of being a prisoner which is uh, where you're completely determined by others yes I've been in cells overnight I'm not uh, for not very serious crimes uh, to do with football and that years ago and um, it is very 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 punishing to be in a cell